stations, pick up the cans, we'll pull your withholds for free. Free Scientologist auditing sessions, let us find your ruin so we can use it against you. I belong to Anonymous. I'm not really a pirate. <laughs> I'm an ex-Scientologist. This is Evil Coat, so I told you kill. On this there is no doubt. No doubt whatsoever. Read it and weep. Building your contract to the Church of Scientology is disgusting. These are children. Children. Do any of you people out there have children? This is just a nice little building and a small organization. But in reality, it is a worldwide tarantula worth billions and billions of dollars. They signed billion year contracts with kids. I can't let you sign it. Signing a contract. I mean, that's slave labor, isn't it? Friends, welcome back. We have a very special guest today. He's an ex-Scientologist named William Drummond, and I'll go ahead and let him introduce himself. William, first of all, it's great to see you again. We uh, wow. started talking, to, talking about a year ago when all this madness, you know, when I jumped in the ring here, and it's been a real pleasure getting to know you, man. Could you please tell people who you are and kind of how you got involved in Scientology? Ooh. Okay, uh, I'm William Drummond. Um, I come from a very, very strong Scientology family. Uh, mother, brothers, sisters, their kids, their grandkids. Well, I mean, their wives, their husbands, related spouses, and their kids and their brothers and sisters. I mean, it goes into like the 20s and 30s by the time you finish. Um, aunts and uncles. So, yeah. I first got into Scientology way back then in like this early 60s. Uh, 64 was the first time I ever came across a copy of Dianetics uh, sitting on a shelf in my mother's humble home. Uh, she just recently left her husband and myself and my brothers and sisters were all in orphanages. But sometimes we would go home for a, a break, you know, like on a holiday period for a couple of days or so. And uh, she was trying to get me into enlightenment like you know Cahoga brand read this you know the prophet read this read this you know and i picked up this copy of dianetics and looked at it and thought fuck that's too that's too difficult for me to understand and stuck it down again i mean like you know it was a bit much i was just a kid anyway um things went from bad to worse for my mother and uh, she ended up into prostitution and stuff, no money, struggling on the streets of Africa while the kids were in an orphanage. And it must have been tough, I can only imagine. And she tried to commit suicide. She threw herself into the sea in Durban, which is on the coast in South Africa. And some guy dived in and grabbed her and heaved her out and dragged her off to this place called the Org, which used to be in Durban, I think it was West Street, Smith Street or West Street at that time. And he was a Scientologist. And she got into it. And um, we were still in the orphanage, but she started spending more and more time. And to be honest, besides saving her life, they helped her a lot. You know, they all managed to come together and get her a little place, like a garage that they reconverted for a place to live. And she started to get into property and she started making a reasonable income and money. But instead of getting the kids out of an orphanage, she was checking it all into the Church of Scientology. Are they the ones that kind of saved her, William? Is that who you're talking yeah. about? About who yeah. helped her get the job and kind of took her under yeah. her wing? How the hell did yeah. she wind up with the with the Scientology people helping her? Is because she was already into it? It was an accident. Book? It was just an accident. It was a complete accident. Jesus. It was just a complete freak accident. The guy's name was Tony Carter. Oh, he was amazing. Shit. I love that guy. Big gold earring, like a gypsy kind of guy. Like, yeah, I loved him. Anyway, I started uh, after school, escaping from the orphanage. You're allowed to go out and run around until about six, seven o'clock, going down to the organ, going in and finding out what was going on. And uh, got my pinch test, you know, where they put you on the e-meter and the, yeah. And then they say, 
think of this, think of a black cat, da 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 da, and then they pinch you, and then they say, okay, now look at the meter, remember that pinch, that pain, you see how the meter reads that, and, and I was like, wow, this is amazing. Because it did read the fucking thing, dude. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, we can it's talk a, about the phenomena of that yeah, later if we end up doing yeah, it. Yeah, we'll come back amazing? to that. But, but for me at the time, as a sure. kid, I was like thinking like, who the fuck is this guy? You know, he's the dawning of aviation, and he was with the Indians, and he was with the, uh, the Mongolians, and traveled the world. And I, I mean, like, as a kid, like, you know, for me, having traveled from England all the way to South Africa on my own on the ship when I was 13, because uh, my mother left me in an orphanage in England, or her, her husband, the asshole did, um, I'd already felt like I was a traveler of the world. I was only a kid, you know, I mean, like, it was all adventurous to me, being in Africa with papaya hanging from the trees and natives with spears and, you know, dreams of lions and, yeah, you're kids, yeah. But anyway, long story short, if my mother liked it and it got us together, I was going to be the best fucking Scientologist there was. I was going to get in there and I was going to spend every hour I could promoting what she believed in and believing in her. And I worked my ass off and I sat down there and I did my TRs and my comm courses two hours straight, no blinking, until I was so fucking spaced out, man. I was, I was, um, so it got to the point where I felt that I was right about everything. I knew I had the secrets. I was gifted now. I had the way. I had a, a, a place to go to from where I was. Mm -hmm. And yeah, uh, I went out on the street and I rushed people who left, right, and saying, so, hi, personality test. Come on in, baby. How are you doing? You asked me how I have this face and this front for protest. That's where I got it from. You were promoting it, it as a kid. You, you were out there yeah. when your mom was on choruses and shit. Yeah, yeah, she yeah. Must yeah, have been yeah. Pr proud of you and you. Wow, well, yeah. Really and I was so happy that she was proud because I, I, yeah. I, I was dumped when I was one year of age with my grandparents. By the time I got to seven, my grandmother died. My mother took me to London where she was living with this asshole who used to beat the shit out of me every day. And they ended up putting me in an orphanage and they left for Africa and left me behind. My uncle sent me to Africa. And when I came off the ship, this guy came up and I had two little suitcases. He said, I'll take those. And I was 13 years of age. And I looked him straight in the eye and said, I'll carry my own baggage. And yeah, he hit me again and again, but it didn't help because the more he hit, you know, the, the kind of, I wouldn't say withdrawn, the, the more defiant I became. So I was already a very defiant youngster by the time I got into Scientology. I mean, I'm very uh, self willed, okay? And, um, yeah, I did really well. I mean, I was the golden boy in Durban all for quite a while, you know, for a good couple of years or so. Um, Betty started to get involved with um, a guy who was um, a very wealthy, well-known cricketer called Kieran McCarthy and was mixing with rather strange people. She kept shooting off to England. And I think it was in 68, 69 when she came back. And she was recognized as the first person to ever reach the level of OT6, which was the preparation for the OT7 and 8 levels, which still hadn't been released. Really? So, so she was doing the training levels for OT7, which is what OT6 yeah. was, right? Where you That's were right. The she out. was the first one. Yeah, she was the it? first one to ever get it. Yeah. She was the first one to attain that level. She was being known worldwide as like... You know, John McMaster's, you know, the first clear, John Mc, wow, well, the second yeah. clear, first and clear. Yeah, he's since gone, uh, we could, yep. uh, I was a whole story well, well, the first well, 10 well, or well, so clears, yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, he was a friend of ours, a very close friend. He was South African as well. Did you ever and, meet him, William? Did you ever yeah, meet yeah, John yeah, McMaster? Yeah. What an honor. Yeah. He helped me with my baby. He used to do, uh, run TRs on me, man. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah. Yeah. I've heard some so, stories about that guy, um, but not to get sidetracked, but I'd love to talk about <laughs> McMaster as we go, too. So, okay, okay so yeah, on, so there I was, and, and everything was going really gung ho and really good. And Betty was like uh, the golden girl. Sorry, I think I've pulled something here. Can you hear me? I can hear you just fine, ma'am. Okay, can you hear yourself? Yeah, kind of. Yeah, yeah, you sound Fuck you. <laughs> it's good, you know? <laughs> We're getting started now. It's got claws. I knew that would come oh, out. Oh boy, all yeah. right. Uh, um, Things started getting a bit weird. Uh, she started taking off to Joburg a lot and uh, mixing with people like Oppenheimer and um, um, 
military aides from Argentina and stuff. And there were suspicions going around at the time that L. Ron Hubbard was pissed off at the South African government because he had created a, a product that was called the Joburg. And now the Joburg is what is now known as the, the sec check. But that's, in, a in the early, for, that's a confessional for people listening. It's a, go ahead, explain what that fucking okay, thing Okay, well, man. it's a security check. And it's a Scientology, it's called a sec check. It's where you have a security check to make, if you're out ethics or you've done anything a bit naughty, it's where they pin you down for hours and hours and hours on end until you give in, right? <laughs> Basically, yep. whether yep. you're right or wrong, you give in. Yep. Believe me, yep. you give in. But it was, origin, it was originally created by L. Ron Hubbard to be used by the South African government to find infiltrators from the ANC into the government to overthrow for the apartheid. That's why they have questions like, have you ever slept with someone of another color? Which you would remember from your sex checks, I right? Do. Okay, okay, but, right. But, but now you're putting it into context. Yeah, so um, there was then a rumor that uh, the Church of Scientology was helping to fund the overtake of the South African government through the L. Ron Hubbard and his cronies. Mm -hmm. And, of course, this has been denied ever since. But my mother came to me. I'd left school by that time, and I was working on the gold mines in Johannesburg. And I was doing very well, and I was fine, and making good money for, for that time and that age. And said, listen, I want you to grab the kids and take them to England. And I said, what? No, I'm fine. <laughs> yeah, I'm okay. I don't want to go to England. She said, no, you have to take the children to England. I said, okay, when? She said, in two days' time passports, documents, and flights are booked. And I will follow you in two weeks. There's enough money to keep you. Your uncle's going to pick you up at the airport. Off you go. Now, the kids were like five, six years younger than me. So they were still school-aged kids. They were just kids. And I took off with the kids to England. And two weeks later, there was no mother. Three, four weeks, five weeks, one month, two months, no mother. And the children got taken by the authorities because I couldn't keep them, obviously. Oh my, I was only 21, 20, 21. And I headed off to St. Hill to find out what the fuck was going on. Somebody must know where she is because she, this is the world's most recognized OT6. I mean, somebody must know where she is. Nobody knew. Her bank didn't know. Nobody knew. And the church closed ranks and said they didn't know anything and had nothing to do. So I joined the Sea Org at St. Hill. So, William, what you're saying, can you, why did they just ship you off? Did you find out later why all of a sudden yeah, you were yeah. away from your mother? And you had to yeah, I'm going to tell you what happened. Okay. Uh, I uh, was in the Sea Org, and of course, I, you have to do your little bit first where you work with the Mesh Universe, so you can, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, the Cadet Org kind of thing, you know what I mean? Yeah. And Talking um, about the kind of the RPF where you have yeah, to do me mess yeah. work for the audience, stand yeah, for matter, energy, right. space, and time work. And that means you basically have to bust your ass free of charge and, and, and yeah. get so fucked up until you realize that, wh that what you did was wrong. You get and up I agree, at I agree with you, Ron Hubbard. You get up at seven in the morning and you work your ass off till about six in the evening until your hands are bleeding, carrying stones to build a castle. At that time, they were still building the castle, right? And uh, then you were going to, they would get, if there was food available, you might get some beans or something. And then you were going to study till like 10 at night, you know, and you were shared like dorms. seven days a week too, right? Oh, like shit, yeah. 14 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, man. But I was still, like, pissed off about where my mother was. And I kept going to um, the, uh, what's his name, um, the Master of Arms, you know, and saying, look, I need to get this question answered. What's happened to my mother? No, don't know, don't know. Anyway, eventually um, they called me in for a sex check, and I did my sex check, and it was okay. And they said that I was creating waves, uh, so what they were going to do was let me go away from the Sea Org to go and find out what was going on and handle my shit, my problems, basically. And they gave me a 75-year leave of absence from the Sea Org, so yeah, a lifetime leave. So you, that was the way they handled that shit. Right. Wow. And they, that, that, yeah. Yeah. And then you March, can come back, you can come back next lifetime and get your yeah, shit whatever. together when you have a So, so, so I, I am still a, a SEAL member. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, I'm not I, doubting I'm, it. I'm, not I'm still alive. Asserts, I'm, yeah. Yeah. I'm still alive. Right. So they marched <laughs> me up to the gate and kicked me out. Now, I mean, I was just a kid. I, okay. I was 20, 21 by that time. But, you know, I was heartbroken. Where's my mom? I mean, what's going on? This church doesn't, you know. And anyway, I, I didn't know. And, 
couldn't find out. And I went a bit wayward for a while and just bummed around, sleeping in the streets, under bridges. I had no home, no family. Shit, you know. um, things were a bit tough. And uh, anyway, after a while, my brother got out of the orphanage and he found out that I was like quite a renowned acid guru, a hippie. And he came looking for me and we met up at this Windsor Free Festival. And he said, I've been looking for you, you're my brother, William, da, da, da. We got together and got an apartment and things were kind of moving along. And one day there was a knock on the door. This was like three years later, four years later. And there she stood. There she stood in the doorway. I saw this glistening light. Betty turned up. And I said, what the fuck? Where have you been? And she said, well, I, I was in prison in Robben Island for... Uh, Averse things that were going on in South Africa. And then I started to put it together because I started to remember the people she was meeting and the deals that she was doing for properties for the ANC and stuff. And I suddenly realized that she was involved with uh, anti apartheid movements and stuff. Because the, uh, the, the, the newspapers kept asking, What is Scientology's stance on black people? Are they also free beings? Are they allowed to have auditing? And, but they're allowed to be a member of your community and your church and stuff. And things got a bit hairy for a while. Anyway, she'd been in prison. We never really found out the whole story behind it still to this day. Wow. But she said, right, I've come to get you and the kids. You're all coming to St. Hill and you're going into the Sea Org. Oh, she, and that, that, that was, wait a minute. Your mom shows up. Out of after all that time all and, that years. and and basically that was it that's not hello i love you i missed you yeah are yeah. you kidding me dude uh, I, mean, so, I know that that's how scientology is but it's still mind-blowing just hearing the insensitivity of this kind of shit dude so you so know? so i took so i said well good luck <laughs> <Yeah>. screw, <laughs> screw you i ain't going back into saint hill they fucking wouldn't tell me where you were don't tell me they didn't know they didn't want anyone to know that you were in prison. You were the fucking highest ranking OT6 member. Shit. Who wanted to know? Who Did you think they wanted people to know that you were in prison? No, they wouldn't even tell your son that you were in prison. I said, so they can go fuck themselves. I'm not going. But, but my brothers and sisters, being younger, went. And they all, they all went into the sea world. Yeah. And Brian became the ED of London. He became the ED of uh, Edinburgh. Then he, he was in the... Uh, Guardian's office uh, under Gaiman and stuff like that, you know, during mm -hmm. Operation Snow White, uh, when yeah, that was yeah. all going on. And, you know, the stories that used to come out, but I'll tell you about that later. Anyway, I sure. fell apart and thought, well, fuck it, you know, I just don't believe in anything anymore. I just don't believe in love, care, family, friends. Uh, just didn't trust. I, I couldn't fit in anywhere because my ideas, I was still a Scientologist. It, yeah. I still so looked so at were people. Still thinking, you were still yeah, thinking I still like looked at a cripple right? and thought DB. I still looked at somebody and thought WOG. I still looked at somebody and thought uh, their speed of particle flow, you know, where are they on the fucking tone scale? I still believed in Scientology. I was still a Scientologist in, in my mind. I still believed in Scientology. But I was on my own. I was an outcast. And um, a few years later, in 1978, I was married to a girl called Christine Arkell. And um, by accident, we were in uh, London uh, in, on Sunny Good Street, uh, where the Church of Scientology is based, is based basically close to at the underground station. And who did I bump into but my brother, John Wordy. He died uh, four or five years ago, unfortunately, six, six years ago. It was five brain tumors while he was an OT3 because he couldn't see a doctor. I won't get into that right now. We'll come to that later. That is a horrible part of the story. But anyway, he immediately called my mom. I found Bill. I found Bill. You know, he's married and he's in London. So we had a get together and she invited me to St. Hill. And like an idiot, I went down because I wanted to see my family, I man. Bro. I wanted I to see my family. Tracking a hundred percent with what you're saying. I wanted to see my mother again. I didn't, you know, can you imagine? I seen her for five minutes in fucking 10 years, you know, when she came to pick up the kids, go back to the sea, and I was, you know. Fuck me, man. That's and, insane. Uh, 
we went down there and oh she took me into saint hilda in her arm and she paraded me around and people loved on me and told me how great i used to be in durban org and how i used to get things done and what a great big being i was you know how it goes you know how it is but all that didn't matter to me Jeez. because i i loved my mother no matter what had happened the, the abandonment the orphanages that didn't even come into my mind you didn't resent her even a little bit no no Fuck, man. how can i she abandoned you. she's my mother she's my no, mother man. i believe me I it's my it. fucking mother man Fuck, dude i've had to get uh, i think when you do mothers man, i, I think if you apart. don't have the love i think the, <laughs> i think the more you don't have the love the more you fight for the love yeah, absolutely and the more dude. you believe in that love yeah, absolutely You're i think yes. maybe that's where i was at in my head you know that love that's became awesome. more important to me because i hadn't really had it right i think that's i mean looking back now that's what i think was going on in my head anyway i went in and i took them by storm yeah i went straight in i redid my basics i did my drug rundown i did my healing course like in three months bang and out the other side so you did all that shit just yeah. to basically be with your mother and do it yeah. just to be around her or, or were I, you feel or were you feeling like a, a scientologist again bro you know well it was i'd been but did you um were you still practicing then you know even though you were still thinking with the tech you weren't on lines right during no, that time no so did you pick it up like um oh like instantly just yeah right it just into the fucking straight, into it. Went in, bro. straight into it man i just shit. blew them away i, I became the, okay here comes when the story gets weird again um <laughs> in the period of time that i was out bumming around i worked at a hotel called the glen eagles hotel which is a big five-star super hotel for superstars like donald trump and stuff like that where they all go play golf queens and kings and so all white glove stuff very high society and they recruited me from there to go and do some gigs for the royal family at saint james's palace so i could say that i was a queen's caterer what kind of gigs are we talking about here oh just serving stuff catering just catering gigs you know and um because i've been trained in five-star hotels and catering i was picked up from this big posh place to go and do gigs like uh the geographical society and stuff like that where prince charles would be shit like that the queen mother you know nothing grand serving champagne walking around and um i started to put on events for the church because it was floundering in 78 shit there were no new names to central files man that uh, for those of you who don't know what that is that means there were no new people coming in and one of the major statistics in the church of scientology is new names to central files bodies because that's in the shop bodies in the shop so there i was um i put on an event for like 150 people and cracked it yeah we got on the phones and did call in and the first five thousand that we called said fuck you but eventually we managed to get 150 out of the thousands <laughs> and most of That's them how it works <laughs> yeah. it's a numbers game yeah you're talking to the guy and he's going get lost i'm not interested get lost so you give it to the guy nick you say you handle him he, he, you know and like you've caught him again and again and again oh it was crazy it was a numbers game anyway then i did another one for 300 350 and it was really good and it went well and then uh my ed my executive director um what was Chris uh, Ballard? Her name was Ballard. What's her first name? I can't remember her first name anymore. Uh, she came up to me one day and I was sitting, they gave me a little office of my own, even though I wasn't on staff. Because you were, I wanted to ask you this, William, were, was the Scientology thinking they could sneak their way somehow into the royal family or perhaps even pick up a VIP to join the cult, etc.? Yeah, as well as other things. Yeah, of course, that's, that's what they're up to. Mind, that's right? always yeah, on their minds. Who do you know? Who can we office. get to? Who can we that's get why, to? So exactly. well, I'll tell you how it worked out. You know, nowadays you have an SM, uh, FSMs. Mm -hmm. That's the field, field, uh, staff members. field staff members, right? Those are people who are allowed to get people into the church and they get a percentage wherever they spend, right? In other words, they're bribing you to get people, but that's something exactly. else. People make a lot of money out of that shit. Yes, you they get a big. Do. 
you get a big whale like my brother brian's made millions he gets a big whale to donate five hundred thousand. he gets 50. exactly he gets 10 percent. yeah he's bought like three or four houses out of that he's done really well wow. They call him super rage. They say, when you see Brian Wordy coming, how's your wallet? Uh, everybody. Wow. Anyway, at that time, it wasn't called FSM. At that time, it was called OP4D, Operation Force Dynamic. Right? You could become an Operation Force Dynamic. This was the first time that Elrond Hubbard decided that people could make money out of Scientology. Because up until that point, nobody could make money out of Scientology except fucking L. Ron Hubbard. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> right. So um, as a member of OP4D I, and being successful and being upstat, which meant I could put my feet on the table if I wanted in Div 6, uh, my privilege, because wow. I was upstat. Wow, yep. Like you everyone always says, if you're upstat, you, you can put your feet on the table in Div 6, right? So I used to sit in Div 6 with my feet on the table. Div 6 is the Public Relations Office of the Church of Scientology, Division 6. And anyway, Vicky Ballard, that was her name, came up to me. And you can check all this out because there are people who know who she's still out and she, she's also fighting. And um, she's out. She's out. Now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's been out a long yeah, time. She did a video with John McGee and um, all those guys in East Vincent a few years ago. Really good. Oh, yeah. for her. Uh, but I think she's, uh, she's now, uh, well, she's out, but she's an indie. Independent. She'll get there. She'll get there eventually. Yeah. Well, yeah. Everyone's mean, a room. hell of a lot better, man. It's anyway, she came to me and said, "Listen, um, how big an event can you do?" And being the cocky little cunt that I am, I turned around because I've just gone clear. I mean, the world was my oyster. I said, "Well, Jesus Christ got five thousand. I can get five thousand and one." She said, "Do it." I said, "You're right." Now, you know that today you have uh, what is called, the, you know, the big uh, events that they have at St. Hill every year for in October. What is it called now? The, uh, You're not the big event. About the, they, have, they have several. Every IS. Year, don't they? The IS. IS. I was, yeah. That's, well, this, that's... Is, this is how it was founded. And they still do exactly the same thing as I did even then when I introduced it. I created this monster. This is something not many people know. How did you go about, just for people that don't know, the IAS stands for the International Association of Scientologists, and this is a slush fund that wow. nowadays cult leader David wow. Miscavige has. Whales of Scientology contribute literally millions and millions of dollars. I believe, um, I don't know if it was the Duggins or I'm drawing a, a lot. As well, yeah. One, one man actually committed 200, 200 million. million. Is, isn't that fucking crazy, bro? Anyways, this is what the IAS is. Yeah, this but they get they get recognition for that and great big stars to hang around their necks and fucking, what you know, fucking chains do, bro. Would you pay two hundred million dollars for that <laughs> cheesy ass medallion that fucking hey, shit. gives you? Shit, fucking, I know people. What I know people. Idiots. I know people who pay twenty grand for a t shirt. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but okay. but they don't but they don't <laughs> do it. They don't do it for um for the trophy. They do it because they think they're contributing to Scientology. So you're yeah. how, how is it that you were the man responsible for? Okay, so that? so they said, well, can you put on a real event? Like I said, yeah, go on five thousand and one. So they said, do it. So I got together with my mother, mm -hmm. and I sat her down and I said, right, Betty, come on, let's show these buggers what it's all about. There's no names in central files, right? The, the church is floundering, so this is my plan. Every Scientologist that comes to the event has to bring a friend who's a non-Scientologist. Every non-Scientologist they bring, cut into the price of the tickets for the event, will be a Dianetics book, which will they will then sign for with their names and addresses, which will then go to Central Files because they've got a book, right? Because the you know, only way you can get into Central Files and Scientology is if you spend money. You have to buy something. Otherwise, your name doesn't go to Central Files. If you can walk if it's in. It's just a book or even yeah, it really just small. Your name will stupid. stay in yeah. there forever and they'll forever always call and you. Ever and that's you. how people get on their mailing list. At that forever. time that my wife was with me when I went back in, she blew out and left. That was 40 years ago. She still gets a monthly mail. Still to this day gets a monthly mail. She's never even done a course. William, I still get mail, and I've been speaking <laughs> out for the last year, bro. Yeah. That's how I've been speaking out for a, a while now, yeah. Do you get mail uh, still? No, they, they they don't like me at all, man. Okay, finally, they stop with you. They, I can't they, wait till they, yeah. they hate me. They hate me. Uh, anyway, uh, what we decided to do was to set up this event. 
and we decided to model it around old English style with knights and horses, like it is now Queen's Caterers, like it is now. It says in the exact model now, it says Queen's Caterers, because I worked for the royal family, I could use the Queen's Caterers name legally. You see? Mm -hmm. So we advertised it all around Europe, and everyone was on the phone, because we decided to show the world that Scientology could be fun. We were going to have music, and Nell Gwynn's juggling oranges, and fire eaters, and knights, and horseback, and to get people in because if i could get five thousand people into those through those doors for this massive event two and a half thousand new names to central files would boost our org right wow cool. so to do that i had to go around all the departments of saint hill the states org to get permission to use the lands in the states you understand i had to go to the printing presses and get permission to use the printing i had to get everyone to sign up because if they didn't agree and sign up i couldn't do it so that's what we did we went out through the communication lines got in touch with and everybody was gung-ho at last somebody's getting something done at last we're going to get people into the org at last scientology is going to expand and i was like a golden boy and i was like given a car with a chauffeur to drive me around because i didn't have a car in those days or a license and it was going great and like Oh, we were working for like three or four months, man, just parting ourselves into this and drawing up the advertising and ordering foods on set of return, bottles of wine, and whole sheep to do sheep roasts. Is, and, and, and William, real quick, this is all in preparation for this upcoming IAS. Yeah, event. yeah, months of the work. Kind of like the first of its kind, right? Yeah, and but it you... wasn't called the IAS then. It was just mm -hmm. a big mega event. Which they copy because they can't do anything original themselves anyway. They right. copy everyone, it's just like Ron Hubbard did. They steal everything. Yeah, so you when didn't think of this, uh, Ron Hubbard somehow did or Miss Cavage did. This you, this isn't something you originated. That's just something you're hallucinating, William. Okay, that's okay. Mm -hmm. That's fine. I'll the same as that ship. The same as that ship going down the Amazon that I didn't see. Right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> did you see that? I, did you see that on my thing where they said, oh, I'm, um, I'm, I'm crazy. I, I think I saw a big yellow ship in the Amazon, right? No, but is it, some, is it a video that you have? Yeah. Um, uh, no, 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 no. It's on this. It's on that attack platform they have. You know where they attack people. What's it called? Stand. You know, it's, that's, Stand? Uh, I didn't even know you were on there, bro. Congratulations, by the way. I'm still waiting to get mine. It's like if they had heard I could, I, that. Dude, that's the awesome of people, that you got that. The amount of people that called me up and said, you've made the grade. <laughs> Dude, I can't wait to get on that. But can, can I say something about that real yeah. quick? Be, first of all, that's awesome because you really do have to be a massive SP is, to get on that fucking thing. Their propaganda on there so disgusting. I actually avoid it, and I don't because, dude, you know, and even the public knows. Nobody takes what they say seriously. Oh, they Jesus. know that they go into their folders. Everybody's done something bad in their life. They just, and then they take they, that and they twist it. Well, I mean, it's I like know. I don't even. It's like El Robert. It's, it's, like it's like El Robert. El Robert Hubbard says in his communiques. He says, "If you can't find anything, make it up." And they do all the time. And they do all the time. Yeah. Or like anyway, I said, they yeah. Please. So um. Everything was going great, and I was out of pocket about thirty, forty thousand bucks, wow. the pounds. Church, English, though, yeah, that's in your own pocket. No, my own money because I was up four D. I was getting a percentage of all the ticket sales. Okay. When the event went through, I would get my money back. This was the deal with okay. the church. Okay. So we were pumping money in there and getting it all done, and and everything was going great. And I was sitting in the office one day, and this guy walked in with full gold braid and fucking peak cap. And he said, uh, uh, you Bill Drummond? I said, that's right. He said, your event has been cancelled. No way. So I said, wait a minute, mate. I've just done like three, four months work on this. Spent a fortune. What do you mean it's cancelled? He said, yeah, that's it. It's cancelled. And turned on his heel to walk out. And as he walked out the door, I said, hey, wait a minute. Uh, 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 uh. Can I see that in writing? Because if it's not written, it's not true. Right. Scientology 101. He said, I don't have to show you anything in writing. I said, well, you can go fuck yourself. I ain't stopping the event. <laughs> you know, go get it in writing, boy. He said, I'm the Commodore's messenger. I said, I don't care who you are. If you're a Commodore's messenger, then you should know the policy. And the policy is you give it to me in writing. Go and get it. Otherwise, get out of my fucking office, boy. Anyway, they stopped the event. Wow. wow. But there's a, there was a problem. They didn't know the ace in the hole. 
in the propaganda, we offered a special guest. And the special guest was Mary Sue Hubbard. And her and I were in secret communication because she was wanted for the um, Snow White uh, shit that was going down. And she was trying to make preparations to appear at St. Hill, but nobody was allowed to know. Mm. Only two people, myself and my mother. They closed the event, and I went AWOL. I went, well, fuck you, and walked off. I, I'd had enough by now. I, I was sick of them lying and cheating, not telling me about my mother being in prison, this, that, and the other. And I'd gone back in, and now they're doing it again. And I thought, oh, Jesus, again. And um, I was sitting at home with my face in my hands, thinking, fuck, what now, you know? When I get a call uh, to go to St. Hill urgently and uh, they sent a car down with the guardian's office my brother was in that car dragged my ass up to saint hill sat me down and said why didn't you tell us that you'd been in calm with mary sue hubbard she thinks you're wonderful she thinks what you're doing is absolutely fantastic five thousand people this is great and now there's no event you've got to put the event on i said well, shit man you've just closed me down like for two months the event's due in like three weeks how am i going to put it on they said we don't know how you're going to do it but you're going to do it you put that event on well, we bust our ass for three weeks. They gave me the use of all the CEO members, everything. We put on an event. When she turned up, I was whisked away, and locked up and not allowed out. <laughs> and um, the event went ahead. Anyway, at the end of the event, I went along to the finance department. They said, okay, how many people came and how much money was there? Give me my cuts. So I can pay some of these fucking bills. You know? And they said, well, we didn't make any money. We gave all the tickets away. There's no money. And that was it. I, I kind of lost Dude. it there. I just lost it. I just went, well, you know, that's enough for me. I've had enough now. You know, I'm out. And um, I decided to go on the sneaky attack. And I knew there were people at St. Hill who were uh, members of the church who were lending money to people at high rates of interest so they could do their OT levels. In other words, you could borrow five grand if you pay 20%. To do your OT levels, right? And then pay it back. And they, they were uh, pushing people into debt, like really badly. So I decided that this was illegal money lending. So I went to the IRS secretly. And I got information and I got the IRS to step in and examine funds. And I got three people kicked out of England back to Australia. And the church went mental. And um, they did. Um, I came home one day in the night and uh, found these CEO members coming out of my house where they'd raided it, carrying all my files and folders and all my information. And uh, they raided my home. And yeah, I came under heavy attack for a while. So I escaped and ran away. And before I left, I stood there at the gates of St. Hill. My mother walked me up because what happened was I went in, I went into the church and I said, look, I've had enough. Now you're raiding my home. Fuck you. You know, I want all my money back for everything I've ever spent in this church. And I'm going to fucking come after you. And they said, now don't forget my brothers, my sisters, my, my, my brothers in the guardian's office, my sister's ED in Australia, uh, my other brother's ED London. And we're talking about a, an ingrained family with a, this OT fucking wizard mother who's been in prison. They don't want it all coming out. So they sat me down with these lawyers. I had to sign a gag order saying that I could have a refund. And I could leave the church, but I'm not allowed to say anything. But I would still be allowed to communicate with my family. I wouldn't be declared SP. So I sat down. And they gave me an envelope with cash. I think it was about 900 pounds, 1,000 pounds, $2,000 or something. It wasn't much. And um, signed the gag order. My brother, who was in the guardian's office, who stood behind me and made me sign it. As soon as I signed it, they grabbed me, marched me out the gate. My mother walked up and she stood there and she said to me, is that it? And I said, that's it. I've had enough. She said, you, you're going, you're, that, you're walking. And I said, yeah, I'm walking away. She said, well, don't do it. She said, come back and sit down. She, I said, look, mom, it's wrong. And she said, I know, but I can't do anything about it because they've got far too much on me. I can't walk away. So please come back in and just swallow it. And I said, no. And I walked. And I walked for 30 years. And it was eating me away for 30 years. 
and it was killing me. I escaped to Latin America in the end, and I was there for nine years in Venezuela, and seven, eight years in Peru. I got married to a lovely woman, but it interfered with my relationship. I was becoming distraught, violent, crazy. Uh, I couldn't relate to anyone. I couldn't relate to anyone. I was on my own. Even though I was married and had kids, I, I couldn't even re relate to my fucking kids. It was eating me away. And she said to me, that's it, enough. I'll, we either end it now or you go back to England and you go and sort this fucking shit out. So I went back to England and um, now the story gets really weird because, yeah, I wanted to go back to England, get some work and help my family and sort some shit out, right? And um, I ended up in Plymouth and I arrived there with like 20 bucks in my pocket and I was sleeping under this bridge wondering what to do. And I thought, now I've got to get out of here, go somewhere else and find some work. And I was leaving to go to the railway station and this guy stepped out and he went, hi, how would you like a free personality test? Oh, come on. Yeah, I, was, I swear to God, listen. And I, now I haven't seen my family for 30 years, right? Listen, 30 years, I haven't seen my family. It's my first day back in England. This asshole steps out, he says, and I said, look, mate, you're wasting your fucking time. It's better you don't talk to me. Just fuck off. <laughs> and I started to walk away. And as I walked away, he went, you're Bill Drummond. And I turned around and looked at him and I said, yeah, that's right. He said, when was the last time you saw your family, Bill? I said, th I said 30 years ago, mate. He said, you see that bloke over there in the coffee shop, in the Starbucks, on the table? That's your brother, Brian. I said, what? He said, that's your brother, Brian. I went, fuck off. He went, that's your brother, Brian. I'll call him. I said, what are you calling? He'll tell you to fuck off too. And he called Brian. And as he called him, he was talking. His phone went dead. And I said, you see, he's hung up. Fuck him. And I started walking. And it was about two seconds later, he was running behind me. He grabbed me. He said, no, no, no. My phone went, talk, talk. There was Brian. And he came up. Wow, dude. And I hadn't seen him for 30 years. And uh, the first thing he said was, uh, hey, Bill, sorry to tell you, John's dead. And I said, yeah, John's dead. Well, what do you mean John's dead? He's only 45, 46, or whatever, 47. He said, yeah, he was on his OT3 and he was having headaches and it was, got really bad. And Like after a year, he eventually went to see a doctor and he developed five brain tumors and he died. I said, well, why didn't you go to the fucking doctors before? Why did it take him a year? He said, well, he's on his OT levels. You know, what turns it on, turns it off. And I went, well, you know, I was like, yeah. And then he said, uh, and you're... Uh, and your uh, father died and i was like well, here we go and your mother's got alzheimer's and she's in hospital and she's in her home and i was like Ugh. but we want you to come down to the org uh, fuck me bro so i went down to the local org with him and of course yeah it was like People were like, you're the guy who did the IS event, you know, the big events. You were the, you're Bill Drummond, you're Bill Drummond. Oh, yeah, yeah, Bill Drummond, Bill Drummond. Uh, so what did I do? I went back in, did my ETJ, sat down, got on the meter, picked up the cans. One week later, I said, within a week, I'd found a job, set up a small business, and I signed up 20 grand worth of contracts. Yeah, I'm serious. I'm, as soon as my brother saw the money, he was down there with the red just banging on the door at 11 o'clock at night after the oil closed, asking for 10 grand, asking for money. And I was saying, no, this is for my family who are in Peru. I've got to get them to safety. I've got to get my kids out of there. I've got to get my wife out of there. No, but they hustled me out of it and made all these promises. And I looked at him and I said, this is the last chance. You screw me over one more time and I will come after you. And I don't care anymore because I've had enough. I will give you the money. And I gave him the money. And, of course, it didn't stop there. They just kept coming. More, more, yeah. more, yeah. more, more, more. Yeah. My wife came over from Peru to stay with me. She was happy that I was back in touch with some of my family. She was happy that I refound my religion. Well, she thought I was happy. She thought I was happy. Um, but then she didn't like it. She decided to leave. And I went in to pay some money in one morning. And the, the course supervisor said, where's your wife? And I said, oh, she didn't feel well. She didn't come in today. 
And he said, she has to come in. I said, no, she's not well. She's not coming in today. You go and get your wife. I said, no. I said, her case is her case. That's got nothing to do with me. Scientology 101. It's not my case. It's her case. Was she Useful a Scientologist, time. William? No, but she came oh. down to York. She, she, she signed up for a couple of basics. because yeah. She was, yeah. And she was on her first basics. And she, she decided she didn't like it. She didn't want to go anymore. So I went in to pay some money because I was giving money for the, um, the new ideologue. And uh, they said, where's your wife? And I said, uh, she wasn't well. She didn't, go and get your wife. I said, no. Said, she has to come in. I said, no. The guy grabbed me and threw me into a chair. And I said, what are you doing? He said, I'm eight seeing you. I said, you're what? You're eight seeing me into a fucking chair. You know what eight seeing is, right? Yeah. Using force to keep somebody within an org, right? Yeah. And I, he said, I'm allowed to do that. I said, if you put your hand on me again, I'll fucking knock you through the window, man. Don't put your hands on me again. Don't do that. I said, you cannot do this. I said, I came in to go on, pay my money and go on course, and then I'm going to work. Now, you've been badgering me for an hour and a half. You're interrupting my tech delivery. This is against, you cannot do this. This is like out ethics. Don't do it. And then you dare to put your hand on me. I'm going. And I walked out the orb. And they chased me down the road, two of them. And they got me in a doorway. And they wouldn't let me go. So I called the police. And this, a plainclothes police car pulled up. And they started straight away. Oh, no, we're a member of the church. And we're only trying to help him. And he's a disillusioned this and that and that. And, you know, that was it. My wife said, screw you, and she left. And she flew back to Peru. And she said, I want nothing to do with you in that church. You finish it, or, or, or this is over. She said, so destroy your, your life. Wife, this cost your wife as well, right? Yeah. She, want, she said yeah, but, you got back together with your family, but she didn't know the drama. But, yeah, but she, she didn't realize the shit that this church brought up on board, yeah. right? When she found out I'd been giving them all that money, she freaked. Shh, fuck. Anyway. Uh, when she got back to Peru, uh, she was in Lima, and uh, I sent her some money, and she went to pick it up from the bank. And when she came out of the bank, she was followed and attacked and beaten and hospitalized. Really? And we didn't have any money to pay for the hospital. So I went to my brother, and I said, look, all that money I've given you recently, can I have some back, just a little of it? So I could, he said, no. What you pulled in, you pulled in. You, we, we wouldn't give you a cent if, it was the last, if you were the last right. person on earth. And I just went, done. That's it. You leave my wife dying. You know, that it's done. Finished. And I walked away. And that was the kind of end of the story. But there's a lot more to the story than that. But that's, kind of, that's roughly my story. You know, a mother in prison, a dead brother, uh, a screwed up mess my whole life, um, living in fear, uh, didn't just lose a belief in a religion or, 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 or a belief system, I lost belief in myself for years. Yeah, I just didn't care yeah. anymore about anyone or anything. I just, total apathy as such, with a brave face. But behind that brave face was this apathetic being that had just been crushed, you know? And I didn't even realize the effect that this had had on me all those years. Because I kept burying everything. I just kept burying it and not confronting it, not looking at it. I, I just, and like, wow. When I started to realize and, uh, and speak out and go into what had happened to me, I just couldn't believe how I could have been so gullible for so long. And always compromising with what I knew to be true, my, my reality. Like Santos says, don't compromise with your own reality. But you adapt L. Ron Hubbard's reality instead, you know, and you do nothing but compromise all the time. Exactly. Oh, yeah, okay, my mother was in prison, but it was for the good of the planet. Yes, she yeah. abandoned the kids, but it was for the good of the, the planet. Yeah. Yes, I, this happened, but this woman got beaten up, or this pregnant woman was made kicked out of because she couldn't keep her stats up into the street. Yeah. Or, you know, yeah, this guy was kidnapped and beaten because, yeah. you know, he was an SP. And you started to justify these actions and like beating people up and following people and coercing people out of their livelihood and threatening them. This is not a religion. This is, this is, this is, the, this is just not okay. And you don't, even though you see it happening when you're in there, you justify that it's okay. Absolutely. You actually agree that that's okay. Yeah. 
And you actually get merits for it. Yeah. For your actions. They give you little plaques for your name on for your actions. You scam somebody out of their fucking money and leave them homeless. You get a little merit saying, well done, Mr. Drummond, for uh, donating to the human rights. Da, da, da. And they validate you for your crime. You know what? You just describe what I and every ex-Scientologist to some degree or another has gone through. First of all, thanks for sharing that, man, because... I knew some of your story, bro, because we talked, you know, about a year ago, um, quite a bit, and I heard bits and pieces of it. But goddamn, dude, just give me one second, because fuck, dude, I, I forgot about a lot of my own stuff. And it's amazing how much it actually stays with you. That's probably why I'm speaking out about it, dude. Yeah. I'm realizing just as yeah. I'm talking to you. First of all, I'm really sorry that you had to go through that, bro, because I relate a thousand percent. Like that's a, a fucking hell that you just described. But I'm Whoa. still even how the fuck, William, what is it specifically? We know the brainwashing, we know the hypno yeah, we know all the elements that go into keeping us there, but how the fuck did we justify all that crap and not see it? And, and when I came out, and um, you did too, and we all go through this, you're so shocked at the con. You're so shocked. I was so shocked at my own behavior, brother. I couldn't believe who I was. Like, I did what? Like, it was like, you can't see any of this when you're in the Truman Show reality. So how the fuck do you think that that, what's your opinion on how that, how you were able to not see it for I so think, long and justify it? I think like, it starts oh, very, very, I mean, you yeah. A lot of people talk about the upper levels and, and um, you know, once you've got through the wall of fire, you get into OT levels and this and that and that. But I think it starts from the very, very beginning. Right. Okay. Right. I think from the moment that they tell you that all big, that everyone is basically good, that dates your presence for a start and makes you feel that you're right. Right. From that very first belief system, that very, very beginning, you know, that validation, he knew what he was doing. He knew exactly what he was fucking doing, you know, and, um, you know, the moment that they, uh, I, I think what Elrond, I mean, you, there are a lot of people who want to agree with what I'm going to say right now. But this is my point of view about Scientology and how it was created. I think Elrond Hubbard knew there was a niche market. And I think he did what he taught us to do in the management uh, binders. You know, go out, survey the market, find the buttons and push them. So what are the buttons on religion? Oh, all religions are crap. They don't accept each other. Okay, all religions are equal. All colors, creeds. And he created this acceptable mm -hmm. package that filled that want and need. Yeah. Right? And that's what he did. Whether or not he would provide that is another thing. That's how it was presented. And I think that from the very, very beginning um, of the basics, when you start to do TRs, and you're also studying on the side, right? As well, at the same time. Is your dog right? uh, okay in the background there, man? He yeah, like he's my, yeah, dying. he's fine. You know, he's he's okay. Roxana, and we'll qué pasa con el perro, mami? Just a second, mate. Can you just stop him crying or something? He doesn't want to be left in the bedroom. He wants to be out with daddy. Yeah, cool. Yeah, so I think you know it starts from the very, very beginning, and it's yeah, it steps up and up and up and up and up. But you know, uh, linked with your basics and and your studies, you know, you start to get things like thrown into the the pitch where you start to the uh, the first thing that you learn is or, or, like the tone scale, mm -hmm. where you start to that put thing, people. That thing's evil, yeah. right? We start to put people in different levels, right? And then what that's teaching you to do is to segregate yourself from and yep. slowly very slowly but surely your mentality from a well-intentioned being gets changed into this being that believes that this what you're now doing is a good intention uh, but what you're now doing is you're saying no you're a db you're in a wheelchair now I have no empathy for you because you made that happen to yourself. Exactly. You were in the wrong place at the wrong time and you fucking pulled it in. So why should I have empathy to take responsibility for you? I got no time for you. I can save a million other people meanwhile. Why should I waste my time with you? Because, you know, 
and uh, you know is make them able more able fuck the unable and you start to do it you start doing it you know and like before you know it you become this mindless moron that actually gets on a bus with loads of people and you're looking at them and you're going db do, and you're putting want, yourself above want, yeah. you're putting yourself above everyone and everything and you think you have this answer and like they keep validating you for it yeah you keep getting validated for it you keep getting told how great you're doing and how fantastic it is and so you get trapped in this endless game of knowing that what you're doing is wrong Somehow, because of the teachings that you're reading every day, you're learning to justify it. Yeah, man. So you, 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 you're taught to justify it by applying L. Ron Hubbard's technology. That's how you justify it. And uh, that's why they would say, well, what's your problem? Blah, blah, blah. Okay, what does Ron say? Yeah. What does Ron say? What does that's Ron say? And now you're remind every religion does that, right? What is if you're yeah. a Christian, what does the book say? What does the Bible yeah. say? There's yeah. no critical thing. I'm not bashing on other people's religions. I'm just saying they all no, say it. the same thing. They just you never for whatever reason look out the brainwashing or whatever. Well, it's always what does the book say? What does the Bible say? What does the Quran say? What is well, the say? first you, thing you say? It's like, when you hang don't... on a second. Why can't you just think about what you might want to say, or maybe you walk into a church, or, or look into the look into the origins you walk into of your a religion. Christian church. Yeah. You walk into a Christian church, and the first thing we say to you is, "Do you believe that Christ died on the cross?" And you're saying, oh, "I'm like, I never, I don't yeah. even know." Like, I'm, I'm, hang on a second, hang on. I didn't yeah. even meet him yet. I didn't. I don't know a, a guy died. Yeah. For, like, hang on hey. a second. Like, yeah. they lose me right at the beginning. Bro. I, yeah, right from the beginning. Instead of saying, "Do you love your brother?" Or do you treat others yeah. as you would treat yourself? Yeah. Do you practice Christianity? No. Do you believe Christ? Because if you don't believe Christ died on the cross, then you're not a Christian. And they stop. So yeah, they're all the same, basically. And then within that's... that, though, there's a lot of truth too. The kingdom of heaven is within. Do what do unto others as you would have them to do unto you. I mean, dude, just like but in every science, religion has. And again, all in sorts Scientology, in Scientology, there was also a lot of basis and snippets of truth to keep you bound of course, to the That's the part of the cheese to keep. That's you part of yeah, trying. of course, you know. And and if it and, was you all know, bullshit, nobody would fall you, for it. Okay, you were into the acting scene, right? So you know, you get people who, and you know that Scientology dominates the marketing front for um, actors now in in the states in a big way. You know, they're really into recruiting actors and stuff. And Absolutely. the first thing, they, and and the first thing they do is, yeah, they take people and they tell them, you know, like, yeah, you know, what will help you in your acting career is your communication skills. Your communication course. Oh, dude, that was such a massive hook for me, brother. And it, you know, we go. Oh, Am I right or wrong? For two hours about what right you said. Right or wrong? Said. Yeah. And that's how they pull you in. And they pull right. you in with that. And you know, uh, they've got a cure for everything. Like, no matter what your problem is, Dianetics will solve it. You know, <laughs> it's like William, yeah. William. William, you know what you're saying about the TRs? I'll tell you what my experience was on that. Right? Because I, I, that's how they sold it. Exactly like you said. For the audience, that's a communication course. That's where you sit across from another person and you stare and you learn how to, um, you don't, but they tell you you're learning how to communicate. So I was trying to make it as an actor. I would do these drills and I couldn't help but feel that it was making me sociopathic. It was shutting down my natural emotions. So I was actually having a conflict with that, William. Like I simultaneously felt like it gave me the confidence to go into an audition ah, and be able to confront ah, them, oops. but at the same time, yeah, yeah, the that emotions was were very mechanical. Yeah, exactly. Got you exactly it's, right it's, on. It's weird right to look on. back at that now. It's right on because and, and you would carry yourself. You would carry yourself with more confidence. You pretend to be confident. Yes, placebo but, effect, that, but the point but is that your emotions other people are really shut you. down. But no, but that's not the point. The point is other people then perceive you as having exactly. that confidence. Exactly. Exactly. Even though it doesn't And then exist. if you get the job, if yes. you get the job, you'll say, yeah. it was because of Scientology. And yeah, that's right. So, Oh, dude, it's such a it's, wicked trap, you know, The thing is, so many people um, don't have that confidence. So yeah. when yeah. you have this false belief and you're confident about it, you portray that in the way you walk, the way you stand, the way you talk, your presence. So other people see that. They don't know what it is that's different about you, and they but, go, I want but that. then you. Yeah. But of course, they want that, and you're going to tell them it's Scientology, right? <laughs> exactly, bro. <laughs> yes. Fuck it, man. I, get to, I know, brother. I'm, I'm having a line charge talking with you, man, because God. But it does it to you. It, 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 it does it. I mean, it's like 
um, we didn't. <laughs> we have no idea how fucked up we were. No um, fucking clue. And that's what's interesting, William. What you just brought up, I was like, there was moments where I realized this was kind of shutting down my emotions. I talked on the last interview that I did with with Brian, where I was doing the communication course, and I knew or oh grade zero where you're told you can communicate freely with anyone on any subject now as i went on up any the level grades, yeah <laughs> and now when i when i went up the grades that wore off and i for a split second i was like i cannot communicate with anyone on level i can't talk about scientology i can't talk about my case i recognize this on a deep subconscious yeah. level but somehow this is what i've tripping out you know about how this works william i still don't have it figured out because even though subconsciously all that doubt and everything is there, somehow the program of L. Ron Hubbard, which you were talking about, gets in there really early on. I think yeah, it's, it's from the very beginning. It it, it, it it goes it it has more power than your own voice, your own yeah. subconscious talking. Right. Isn't that wild, bro? Because think, we should have been able to get out of this at some point I, if it wasn't that way. You know I don't think I, mean? I don't think we ever get out of it. I don't think we ever can undo what's been done. Um, it sure takes it. I mean, I'm still working on it fucking 15 you know, years later, so maybe it's yeah. permanent. But that's how deep it gets into your blood and your soul and your mind, brother. I mean, I was listening it's to your video with this guy yesterday, Mr. Sheen, and uh, I was listening to him. And you can still see the Scientology in him. I'm sure people see the Scientology in me, dude. And, yeah, and all of us. I, I'm, it's it once I feel like once that virus gets inside your mind, you're probably going to have be trying to delete it for the rest of your life. That's just my total opinion. Well, I don't think it's a case of delete it or, or I think it's a case it, integrating it. I mean, yeah, you, I, understanding and accepting that it's happened and that's it. That's, I think is, is the end of it. You're, but that's a huge problem. That's a step. But that's a big step. Yeah. Because you can never make it go away. That that experience is there. You, you mm -hmm. cannot um, you cannot uh, you go into denial. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's why I've just this is the point I've come to is is to realize that yeah, I mean that happened, exactly. and yeah, um, uh, do I still think as a side? Even now, I ask myself often, why did I think like that? Why did I look at that person and think that? Because it's still there. It's still there in the background. And it's like, maybe it will and maybe it won't ever go away. But the thing is, I've, I've, I've learned to come to terms with it now. I'm yeah, more at peace I'll with say. myself. I'm I'll more say. at peace with myself now. And my wife will tell you the same. I'm much, oh man, I was such a, um, what's the word? Overwhelming, demanding being. I mean, I was like, my way or the highway, because I knew. I knew. We you see, knew. and I didn't fucking know shit. <laughs> I didn't know shit. I didn't know other people hurt. Right. I didn't even. Know, I couldn't even oh, feel other people. Show, show the audience that absolutely adorable Come on, buttons. six month old buttons. Yeah. Jesus Christ! Look at Come on, buttons. buttons. Say hello. Is, it a he, is buttons a he? Is he? Yeah, he's a he. Yeah. He is the cutest thing hey, that I've ever oh. seen. He loves you. Oh. Now, why can't Scientology promote something like that? You know, oh, I'm surprised how many Scientologists and when you were in the orgs and stuff, how many Scientologists do you know had pets? Well, if they did, they probably thought that they were a being inside of a pet and commanded them around and just made there was no connection, probably, yeah. to their pet. That, no. I, even no as a Scientologist, I still no love, yeah. as a Scientologist, I still love dogs. They couldn't beat that out of me, man. Oh, uh, well, you know, it's um, just dynamic, it's <laughs> absolutely adorable. <laughs> yeah. He wants to. He wants to be on camera, bro. He's a, he's a ham. He's yeah. Horrible. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I, but what I can <laughs> say is, like, you know, people want to know. This is the thing. People always of want to know. Of course, bro. And that's, that's uh, another big hook, right? Yeah. We and, don't know what the fuck, so we want to have some foundation yeah, some, in which to some go forward, right? Yeah. Yeah. And people want to know, and. So many cults uh, thrive on this. You really want to get in. The, you really want to get no, in here, don't you? Keep them in here. Keep you really in. want to get let in him. there, don't you? Mm. Yeah, let him, let Try him not to eat the fucking microphone, all right? <laughs> hey, what? What? That dog what are you very, you're biting at me? <laughs> he's very theta, as they would say in Scientology. You can yeah, see the theta oozing off of him. Yeah, I don't still, you? Feel, I still love to use those words, William. But don't so, you feel the so theta funny grows? And stupid. But, but don't you feel the great the, the theta grows with uh, shared realities? But they have to be realities. Uh, 
one of the false realities okay right. like uh, we have a shared reality but it's not done with any animosity uh we're not out here to beat down on anything or anyone it's, we're just telling a story about something that that has happened that is real it's a reality and we have a shared reality and there, there are so many of us i mean it's like uh, mr sheen was saying yesterday hundreds of thousands hundreds yeah. of thousands i mean if you hundreds. add on to the fact of the damage that uh, it's such a good analogy to use virus in my opinion because there's only 25 to 30,000 actual members but Left. it affects millions of people families Left. businesses their front group dude, yeah but what about the ones that being gone it's way in to society and it's fucked up millions well of it's not his last stand i mean they're on their last stand this is their last stand i mean this william i always think that brother but check this out every time i think this thing is going to go away there's so much <laughs> money and power behind just when you think you got them just when you think they're going to go down motherfucker they have a way of always coming back like the dead dude so until they're actually buried in the ground their tax exempt status is relieved there's healing that occurs i, I won't believe it till i fucking see it and also i don't think they're going to take it down very easily um they won't go easy the money that they have there's also power behind it so it's not just some of small course. ass cult you know how oh, it works, of, course. of course so it's a bigger problem i think than people yeah, I mean, realize if they really want to take this thing down but um someday i hope dude and and maybe no. it, i don't i what honestly don't know but i just know that there's a reason with the amount of outcry it's allowed to continue I mean, with the amount of outcry, okay, I mean, you know, 20 years ago, they, you wouldn't get this amount of outcry about Scientology. Nowadays, it's like everywhere. It's still, I, it, but it's still there, and it's still abusing and human why? trafficking people. It's why? still there, despite. Why? Look at what Leah alone but did, why? dude. But why? Well, that, that's it. Yeah, right. I mean. That's a great but, question that people should Yeah, ask. thank you. Yeah, well, I am asking. Uh, is it because the powers that be that instigated it in the first place and used it in the first place also have secrets to hide. Right on the nose. And until Scientologists and my, this is just my opinion, start dealing with that, they're never going to take them down. They're just going to yeah. see, we got to take, and also dude, I got to tell you, man, I don't regret my Scientology experience only because what I got out of trying to un, not undo it, but integrate it took me on a journey like you I know you've been through this as well William and it's ongoing to learn so much about what I thought was just learning about cults actually opened up to learning about the world we live in and I never would have been motivated to go on that journey if I didn't feel like my life depended on getting my mind back because he fucked me up so fucking badly I don't have the words for it that's why I've been doing these videos to try you to come out right now yeah. you're looking good oh thank you man and, and dude you too you look fucking i i've 70 man years 70 man. I, no dude 70. You're, you're getting younger and younger and younger and I'm, I, honestly I, i'm not yeah I'm but not don't, forget, don't forget I've been don't forget don't forget man don't forget i'm an ot right <laughs> well i mean we we both know i'm an ot3 too by the way so we know that's the real reason why we uh look good and and are sounding good but uh, oh so here's a little bit of a story right would so, you like um, to write a success story william yeah, stick it up your ass, man. Success, yeah. <laughs> uh, come on, I'm yeah. Up. Yeah, so you can, about so, it now. yeah, so you can hold it against me later. Right, but you said you <laughs> I loved would it. Never you do said that. you said you loved it. <laughs> so um, we, yeah, I got a telephone crazy. call a few years ago, out of the blue, right? And I'm in Latin America, right, with my wife and kids. And, uh, my wife said, "Hey, look, we got this message, this call uh, from this woman saying that um, are you Bill Drummond?" And I said. Well, who is she? She says, oh, she says she's your sister. I said, well, my sister, uh, Charlene, I mean, uh, Charlene Wordy, because my family's name is Wordy, by the way, not Drummond. So if you look into me, you won't find them under Drummond. You'll find them under Wordy. But um, what, can, you spell, can you spell that, please, William? W-O-R-D-I-E, Wordy. Okay. Yeah. So I thought, well, that can't be right. So anyway, I checked it out and I thought, nah, it's probably somebody trying to scam me for money from Africa or something because it originated from Africa. Anyway, it turned out that it was Elizabeth Wordy was the name of this woman, which is my mother's name. And that she was my sister that I never knew I had for 45 years. That on the day I arrived in South Africa when I was 13, my mother had been pregnant and she put the baby into an off, a, a, up for adoption. And this girl had been trying to find her roots for 45 years. And she saw me on YouTube and, and on Facebook and stuff. And she got in touch and said, 
Wow. And yeah, I've got this sister. And um, so, I mean, like the story just goes on and on and on, you know, like Jeez. my mother was some kind of weird woman. Yeah. And uh, that's just really weird. But we're really close now, her and I. But my brother, Brian, flew to South Africa when he found out, right? And um, tried to get her into the Church of Scientology. And, tried uh, to get her into the Church yeah, of Scientology? Yeah, you, yeah, she, fuck, of course. Yeah, but, of course. Yes, yes, yes. Anyway, that didn't work out. And uh, Thank God. She, but she called me up and told me, because I've been trying to find my mother. And I was having no no luck because obviously the church doesn't communicate with you. You're an SP, there's no information. And I didn't know. I knew that she was ill and she was in an old people's home dying of Alzheimer's somewhere, but I didn't know that was it. Couldn't find. I was calling 700, 800 Alzheimer's Shit. homes around England, man. Right. Yeah, you can ask people. I was on the phone day and night trying to, do you know, do you know, do you know, do you know? She called me up one day. She said, Brian told me that mom is in a hospital within 30 mile radius somewhere of East Grinstead. So I thought, okay, I can narrow the field. Jesus. Right? Because I was looking up in Scotland where she used to live. So I narrowed the field down and I called up this, these places and I was saying, do, do you know this woman, Betty Wordy? You know, do you know? No, never heard of her, never heard of her. And I was onto this place one day and I was talking to the woman. I said, I'm trying to find my mum. Her name's Betty Wordy. She's got Alzheimer's. She's been there for a few years. Is, is she registered at your clinic or, or your center? She said, no. We were talking a little bit, and I heard she had a South African accent. I said, oh, you've got a South African accent. We started talking. And I said, yeah, my mom was from South Africa. She said, oh, the only person we've had here, that we've got here from South Africa, is a woman called Betty Yardley. And I went, click, because Laurie Yardley and my mother had a relationship. So I didn't realize that she then gone and got married again, obviously, I'm right. 30 years out of touch. Right. That's my mom. So I then got in touch with them and i made an arrangement to go and visit my mom because i want to find my mom she's dying right and the call came back from the 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 the, the, the hospital saying yeah we're very sorry we cannot allow you to visit your mom because your brother and sisters have said that you would be uh, that it would be damaging to her health and disturbing to her why did they take the Scientologist word, William? They do this all the time. Wait a minute. To wait a minute. Love was. Okay. Wait a minute. So, wait a minute. so I, so I said, so you, what you're telling me is you're going to prevent a son from seeing his dying mother. And they said, well, your brother and sister are of um, what they call it um, legal, whatever. And I said, okay, uh, whatever they say, I don't really care. I'm coming up there. And if you try and stop me from seeing my mother, I will make sure the BBC cameras are with me. And I will fucking create such a scandal. You will not stop me from seeing my mother. So eventually they capitulated and I went to see my mother. Oh. And of course she was, she was um, uh, crippled and screwed up and buried in this place. And while I was waiting in the waiting room, I thought I would look through the visitor's book to see how often she got visits. Don't say no. she didn't get any visits, no. man. She got one or two from my sister in a year. My brother had never been to see her once. What? They were power of attorney over state and her affairs and all the properties and everything disappeared and there was no money and she was living in rags. Meanwhile, my brother was donating hundreds of thousands to the IAS. Welcome to Scientology. Uh, uh, I really don't want to go down this road because if I go down this road, I'm just going to crack up because it's just too much. It's just like, you know, yes, my mother was a real fucking lunatic. Yeah. And yes, yeah, she made a lot of mistakes, but she was my mother. And to stop, anyway, she died. I didn't know. I just got a message from my brother on the email one day saying, yeah, I'm sorry to tell you, your mother died 10 days ago. Uh, we took her up to Scotland because she wanted to be her ashes to be spread over the loch, uh, blah, 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 blah. Uh, there's no money because it's all being used for a keep. So don't ask goodbye. And that was literally what he said. And it's like, I thought read to tell me that my mother's died and you don't even tell me I wasn't invited to the funeral. I, I mean like nothing, absolutely no, nothing at all. I, I didn't get a chance to say goodbye, but I did get a chance to see her before she died. And we did sit together for an hour and, um, I suppose that will have to suffice. Uh, yeah, man. I'm sorry to open. I know, dude. Um, you know, 
if it's but, a I consolation, mean, William, I mean, your story is so many people have not been able to see loved ones because of Scientology's yeah, uh, I know, intervention. Man. It's absolutely, oh, shit. I know. I, I can't know. even believe what, what I can't even believe what you said is true, but I know it's true because I know. Oh, Jesus true. Christ. I mean, I've even got a photograph of her and I night together in the hospital. You know, I mean, I, I, I don't want to use my mother's death as a, 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 a pedestal to in my battle. OK, uh, that's not what I'm about. I mean, I forgive my mother. I really, really hope that she rests in peace, honestly, as much as it tear jerks me. I really, really forgive my mother. OK, whatever she's been through, I'm sure she suffered tremendously as well. Yeah, yeah. OK. And I mean, a, a, a woman stripped from her kids. Uh, come on. Can I, can, I'm trying to understand this myself, man. And I, like, how on earth, <laughs> this not, I had to cut my parents kind of out of my life, William, because I would always get sucked back in, like you said earlier, compromise with my own integrity. It, it, I would have never gotten to Scientology if I didn't grow up in a toxic parental environment. Let's just put yeah. it that way. It, yeah. it, it was a harmonic on that. So that took me a long time to figure out. Now I'm on this end having to break that natural tie that I had with my parents basically to save my life. And so I went through 10 years of crying and yeah. dealing with those emotions and letting yeah. them come in. And you still come out. Luckily and I had acting because I could act them out. Yeah, that's right. You can put it, my, you can put dude, a face I on. Kill, I would have killed, killed myself yeah. if I didn't have that as an yeah. outlet. So right. what I'm saying is, man, like, despite all of that, you know, and I don't think my mother in particular can be healed because she's a narcissist. So there's no ability to open up the heart. That's just the way it is. There's, you know, I, I don't think it's possible. But if it ever did happen, if they ever woke up and realized what they did, I would let them back in right away. The yeah. thing is, man, like, how on earth, if you're a mother, like your mother, like my mother and all the other mothers and fathers, how on earth can you break that bond with your own flesh and blood? That's what I had such a hard time trying to heal because it's so unnatural. It's so not right. Yet Scientology's brainwashing has the power to actually remove something that's so almost unbreakable. And to remove it from thousands it, dude, of people. They, and to remove it from thousands yes, and thousands, and not just from like one a person. Science, like it's a not science. like a one-off. It's not a one-off. No, it's it's done like a science. Yeah. And it's done this to, like you said earlier that Brian mentioned, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of families. Bro, I'm so used to Father's Day, Mother's Day, my birthday. Today is my birthday. We were talking about this yeah. earlier. I didn't even know today was my birthday, dude. That's how much I don't think about these things because I had to make a whole life adjustment without being able to speak to my mother and father, the privilege that most people have in their lives. You happy I mean? birthday Amen. to you. Oh, fuck happy man. birthday you. to you. All right, happy you. birthday, <laughs> Doug Kramer. Stop, it's too much. Happy birthday to you. I, <laughs> dude, thank you, man, because I'm so numb on birthdays and Father's yeah. Days. I mean, I cried. I got all, I cried so much, bro, that now it doesn't even phase me, which is probably not a good place to be in either. Well, yeah, you know, when it gets to the point, just, there's no Scientology more Scientology forces you, man, to either to, to save your life or join up with the cult. Some people's positions are yeah. one way or the other. Yeah. Just like you, yeah. bro. You, yeah. Look at what you just described, man. You, William, you, even going back to the very first time when your mom showed up at your house and took your brothers and sisters, you didn't fucking go. Even at that age, you said you were like 20, 21 years old. Dude, you saved your life right at the very beginning. You've been fighting. Yeah, but I went back in. You were the non-conformer all the way. But I had to compromise. And yet it still fucked you up. It's but still, I had to still... compromise to, to be able to see my family again. I mean, But you were in a catch-22, man. It's a complete bullshit situation that they put you in. What do you want to stay with your family, which is your natural bond, William? Or do you want to just uh, go off on your own and, you know, go homeless and probably, you know, lose your mind? They never gave you a fucking choice out of the, out of the gate, which is why I'm saying I'll never get my family back, dude. But the kids that are growing up in this shit, that are second generation, that never had a chance... This fucking shit needs to stop, dude. It's completely yeah. illegal. Second it's generation. Totally insane. Listen, in and they my have family, no chance. in my family, it's third and fourth generation now. My yeah. brothers' wives, uh, their kids have got kids, and their kids have got kids now. 
you know, uh, and like, you know, it's third and fourth generation. I mean, like, you yeah, know, man. I mean, I will never get to see my nieces, my nephews, and those kids. I'm sorry, man. I'll, same, I'll here. Never, same here. I'll never be, be able to give them the benefit of the things that I've learned in life as their uncle or, their, or even as their friend. And look at you'd be look at all the benefit they would dude you look at all the benefit they would get if they could hang out with you and listen oh, to your wisdom. Just hang they're out together. Hear that. They're just gonna get the Scientology down. Yeah, there. for the rest forever and ever. And I fuck mean. It's, dude, I, sometimes I want to just scream. I, I I can't believe the world that we're living in that tolerates something like this. It's such an obvious scam and hoax, and yet I guess you have to be affected by it for it to really matter to you because I'll I'll never forget. Yeah, but I feel. I feel sorry for them too. I mean, I think about my sister who's ill now and dying also. She's got multiple sclerosis. She's in the church, right? And I mean, we haven't spoken for say 40 years. And her husband is the ED of London Org. And she's at St. Hill. And they, they just don't see each other. I mean, he's not even there for her. I mean, what kind of hell is, are they going through? You know, I mean, like, I, I feel so, so sorry for them, man. Yeah, I feel you do. But, but, but actually, there's nothing I can do. There is nothing I can do. If my sister picked up the phone tomorrow and said, fuck it, Bill, you know what? I'm out of here. Can you give me a floor to crash on? Shit, yeah. The, uh, the pillows and the clean sheets would come exactly. out of the cupboard. And I'd cook her up a good meal. And I'd sit and I'd laugh with her about this. God. And they think of the healing that would occur, too, on yeah. both ends, dude. Just laughing tears. Laughing and crying all day long. Can you imagine? You know, I can't. I can't even. I know that's not going to happen with my family. So I try. It's not going to happen with mine either. But, no, it's uh, no. My no. They're lost. I mean, it's never going to happen with Brian or Charlene or any of their family or kids. It's just, I, I think Brian has a. Just, I'm the evil uncle. Hey, you know what, William? At least you know you speaking out. Just so you know, it's not in vain. Even though we might not get our families back, we can just. The more people that speak out, the more opportunity there is for other future families and generations to maybe That's not right. have to go through this. Maybe one kid will escape. Hopefully, maybe you know what I mean. You can one, tell you a little one will do me. One will do me. Uh, yeah, I'd exactly. be so happy. That you know. makes it all worth it, dude. It just, and I know, you know, I know your work has helped out a shitload of people, and you've been very, very vocal about it. I fucking admire the crap out of you, dude. You, you inspired me. So it's like, I guess there's. Oh, well, thank you. You're thank very kind. You, dude. Well, it is what it is. Well, I just do what I can do. I mean, sometimes I'm not even sure what I'm doing. You know, yeah, I just I just turn up and I don't prepare anything. I just roll in and blast away. You know, William, well, you missed your calling as an actor. You have natural charisma on camera. Whenever you grab the megaphone, that's very you kind have of a you. stage presence. It's, it, you're just fucking cool, man. And I love the moniker of the pirate and shit because it's almost it reminds me of that policy: pirates and bums from Elrond. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. There you go. Uh, Boots in the sky. <laughs> God, he wrote some great policies didn't he, to boost your yeah. ego up, William, and to mm. make you think like you were the elite and boots in the sky and we're going to take yeah. on this responsibility i imagine that's what it's like in the service right you have such a bonding and such i a, think the, the book that summed it up for me really was battlefield earth right johnny good boy tyler okay how so? Uh, how, how so? well because you had to buy your way out of the, the, the you had to buy the planet back and right, stuff like that right. from the intergalactic uh, uh bankers you know the sharks and stuff right, right and right. i was like watching this and i was thinking that like elron hubbard's mentality or how he actually thinks with yeah. scientology like money money yeah. money money buy 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 the planet take over the planet win the planet back at whatever cost at whatever cost yeah. and it's like yeah it's a shitty movie though <laughs> i know <laughs> the, book the book wasn't half bad and then like well, you said, he's just describing good. himself it was an autobiography yeah. it was yeah. you know it was his subconscious living out or whatever. Oh, yeah of, of his own dream you know so what exactly. do you think about so, so what do you think about his excalibur have you looked into excalibur i don't i haven't dude tell me i mean i know a little bit about it i know that that was the book that supposedly caused um anybody that read it to jump out the window and uh suicide themselves so deep was the knowledge yeah, yeah, but yeah, tell yeah. us what you know yeah about okay it. Yeah. I got a light one up. Too much noise. Too much noise. Too much noise will fucking kill you, right? You, you'll get pneumonia yeah. and die if you're not prepared hey, for OT3. Don't tell me any, please don't tell OT3. me anything that might get... I might jump out the window if you tell me this story. But this well, this is, is my theory. This is my theory, and it might be wrong. And there are people who disagree with me when I talk about L. Ron Hubbard and his black magic uh, connections and his reasons for doing that. But from my own experience, which may or may not be valid, um, I believe it's this. Mm -hmm. uh, when he wrote Excalibur, and if you ever get a chance to read Excalibur 
or the parts of that are available, it is really freaky shit. This guy. Can I, can I ask you real quick? I'm sorry to interrupt, but where the hell can you actually get that? Do you know? Oh, uh, you can Google it, and you can find snippets of it on Google and snippets, stuff. Snippets. Yeah, snippets. yeah. The, the whole book is hard to find now. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, what happened was, L. Ron Hubbard apparently was under anesthesia. Whether or not he'd done a little bit of amphetamine prior, I'm not sure, but I know he was a, an amphetamine uh, junkie. Um, but uh, we won't go down that. We'll just keep to the facts. Um, apparently, while he was under anesthesia, he went into some state where he envisaged that he crossed this great divide and went through these gates into this other dimension mm -hmm. where all of the world's knowledge was laid out in front of him when the smog is bored. Yep. And uh, he learned all these amazing things. And when he came back into his body as such, or back into this realm, he bounced off the operating table, or the, which he says, and raced out the door. And for a day and night, for seven days, wrote this book called Excalibur about this great experience. Mm -hmm. And he often bragged about this guide that he had from the spirit world. Uh, this woman dressed in satin or whatever it was, red, uh, red hair. This is yeah, guardian, red hair. Guardian, angel. He's guardian angel, right? Yes. Yeah, from from this book. Now I think that after having ex such an experience like that, albeit hallucinatory, one would set out to attain it again. One would set out to find that again if one could. It's like the first time you did a trip on acid. You know, you right. you you want to go there again, right? Okay, so yeah, right, come on. Right. So I think what he did was he started to delve into different methods of trying to find this again, which is one of the reasons why he started to delve into the depths or deeper depths of black magic or magic in general, but eventually swinging over to the black magic side. And I do believe that from that he developed this love and this collection of books on magic, and this is what yeah, booted him into that form. And I think also thinking about that and thinking about the bridge across the Great Divide, mm -hmm. the bridge, the Scientology bridge, he tried to create this bridge to this realm. Yeah. He actually believed that you know, these uh, upper levels of OT actually existed. He, I mean, he, he believed it. He believed that. And he believed yes. that he operated on those levels. And he wanted people to be able to attain this hallucination that he had. Mm -hmm. And I think this is what he was basically selling. So, yeah, um, yeah, it is yes. deeply linked to mind control, black magic, um, and full, creating, full creating an alternative reality that is full not real. On. You know, and I think that it started from there, and that's where he lost his way. And, well, I think he was always lost from the beginning, but he was a crazy, right. ca and he, crazy well, character. He, he got into Crowley when he was 16, Alistair yeah. Crowley, with the, with the yeah. Book of the Law. And, yeah. you know, a lot of people just skip over this. Maybe we'll do a whole nother um, podcast oh, no, this is, this about is the a, black magic. Yeah, know, but this know, is a whole thing. I mean, there's a whole thing involved in this. I, that's why I'm saying we need a whole nother pod, yeah. a podcast for this. And I'd love to talk about this with you because we've talked yeah. about it briefly. This is so, you know, hey, hey, I just wanted to say real quick, what you're bringing up is, very, in my opinion, very important to understand what Scientology actually is because that's the roots of it. Yeah, and that's what everything else comes from that, which you just described really well. That was his stairway to heaven. That was his yeah. bridge. Yeah. And there's a lot to know about the occult, too, because you can get up to some shit where you can start to lose your mind and connect okay, to um, other realms and all. I don't know if ever you've ever, if, if you've ever looked at the occult, right? You know, there's an old saying never look in the mirror after midnight, you'll see the devil, right? You know this thing, okay. Now, if ever you you study the occult, whether it be black magic, red magic, whatever magic, you, you study the occult, right? You will come across a thing called scrying, mm. right? Where you sit in front of a mirror and you look at yourself, and you start to hallucinate and see in the right. etheric realms and the astral around realm it. Above. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But then there's another form of scrying where you sit three foot apart from another person. TRs. TR yes. Zero? Yes. Well, he got that from Crowley too, the TRC. Yeah, he got that and from you Crowley can also, too. You can also and the OTO. Oh, that came from Crowley and OTO. Yeah, the, the OTO the zero. zero. He even called, <laughs> he even, we got to do a whole nother because even <laughs> the actually, way that TR zero, the TR0, TR0 zero is actually sold spying. That's what it actually is. And it creates a, a, an alternative separate reality. Totally. If you maintain that for a period of time, never mind Absolutely. two hours. Like everyone Hubbard says, if you can do this for three minutes, you, you, you're in. He actually Dude, says it. And 
that's such a powerful drill that that and people don't realize how powerful it is yeah yeah People this is what I'm saying, William. I was a kid. I was around nine or ten years old when I first did this uh, Crowleyan magic, which he renamed ODDR Zero. Yeah. Bro, it. If we start talking about this, we can really talk about this for. I can do many, two hours, hours straight, no want, blinking. Two hours straight, tears running down my face, no, no blinking. blinking. Two Did hours you straight, actually yeah. do two. Yeah, hours. back yeah. in the day, audience. Back in the day, in the hard tears. Used to call yeah. it the hard TRs. You actually and then, fucking did it for two hours straight. Yeah. Not uh, one they, blink. They changed. I, they is changed that possible? Some, yeah. It really is fucking Shit, mind blowing. Man, what yeah, the fuck come, was happening to you? Were you dying? I mean, I, how the, can the, you the, even... the face in front of you would start to change and yeah. you would start to hallucinate and seeing it in different forms and you would start believing that this was that face in past lifetimes and yes. you start getting, all sorts of things. We're all there. We got that right. Yeah. And I that thought it was that amazing kind of as a kid. Yeah, I was like, yeah, dude, yeah. I tapped into some shit. serious Free acid, shit man. Free acid. Yeah, wow. Dude. I was exactly. hallucinating. Yeah, it was crazy. But the, wow. there was more to it than that as well that, that kind of got me. And, um, you know, uh, it wasn't until after I got out of the church and then I decided in the in my wandering years that if Erwin Hubbard was into magic, I would go and study magic. So I went up to a place called Sheffield in the north of England, well, central north. And I studied with a woman called Pat Krauser, who's the leading authority on witchcraft and black magic and taught at the university and had a, a, a covenant. And I got involved for a while and started to read up and study. Wow, the similarities just blew my mind. Is, the that, similarity, when you started to, is that when you first started yeah. to look into the occult aspect of Scientology? Yeah, Did you yeah. know beforehand that there was no. any kind of link? Yeah, to yeah. I, I, I'd heard that uh, he'd been involved in the occult and stuff like that, but I wanted to see if there were any similarities. I wanted to know. So I went and had a look. Wow, that blew my mind. Like the, the, the TRs were just like, uh, wow, just right in there. It was just exactly. identical, identical. Learning about Freaky. this kind, kind of stuff cracked my case in Scientology. And <laughs> put so many dots together because Scientology <laughs> makes so much sense understanding the occult background. Yeah. Because everything else is framed around that. Isn't that amazing? Uh, because uh, because uh, Junior said that Scientology is, he said that normally a black magic ritual takes about a week, maybe two weeks top to do. Some yeah. take a little bit longer if you're trying to do the moon child ritual or whatever. But he said Scientology, and this is very buried and hidden, is simply a black magic ritual extended yeah. out over, over a lifetime. And that's yeah. exact. Or, it's just built upon and built, it's built upon and built on and built upon. And you're led slowly but surely across this uh, great divide. I a need bit to see by that bit by bit. Totally. I need to see that book that Nibs has that's, you know, you can't get yet. And it's in the Library of Congress or something. You know, there's a book that he wrote that's supposed to be absolutely ex explosive, breaking down in detail the black magic aspect and who Hubbard really fucking was. Do you know what book I'm talking about? I think I've heard Jamie about DeWolf's it. got it. Or Yeah, I Jamie DeWolf. So uh, I've, I've watched some of his videos where he talks about his uh, history, his family's history and magic yeah. and his studies. And it's like nuts. It's crazy. Did you see yeah. the one that he did in 2014, I believe, where it, Pete Griffiths was there and all these ex Scientologists? Yeah, 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 yeah. Forty five minutes on yeah. um, on this on yeah. Crowley's Fantastic. magic. That alone was crazy. But, but the thing is, if you mention anything, any of this stuff uh, to some of these controlled opposition, they just think nuts. Or Scientologists, yeah. controlled opposition, yeah. or Scientologists. They, or Scientologists. Roll, they roll their eyes. They roll your eyes. Yeah, they're like, what the, where, where the fuck's he coming from? Especially but, uh, a Scientologist. They, yeah. Dude, if somebody would have told me that Hubbard was a black magician when I was in Scientology, I'd go, go fuck yourself. You hey, shit, man. man. If, hey, if I wanted to get a phoning, I would have started with that. I would have gone, hey, I'm into black magic, man. I'd have got so many people. Fucking just, A, man. Hey. You probably would have gotten more people. Yeah, Fucking I, A. Just be honest I, about I, it. Just be honest about it. I reckon you'd have done better. <laughs> shit, that's a good point, man. That's yeah, actually reckon, very true. You know, uh, but anyway, yeah. That's my story, basic, basically. Uh, I hope it That's helps anyone man. who sees this. Um, I hope they understand. I, I don't want anything from this. All I want is that they think twice before they take a personality test or a pinch yeah, test. Or, um, and I would like all of these people out there, those hundreds of thousands who are there's so much aggression on the ex Scientology line. So just to put down the arms and embrace each other, because whatever your experiences are, guys, you know, we're all hurt and 
you know, we've got to understand that, A, you know, we should be loving each other and holding each other close because, you know, we missed out on so much, all of us. And But I see these fights online. This is why I don't do it anymore. I don't go online and stuff me neither. anymore. Me neither. I'd rather, I would rather pick up a banner and stand in front of the fucking ideologue somewhere and just give it's them point, It's yeah. pointless. I don't, yeah. I don't, uh, there's it's only just, one face group I'm involved with, and it's called Scientology Deprogramming. And yeah. a lot of these people yeah. have gone beyond, um, you know, just saying that Scientology is yeah. the only evil offender. They, yeah. Some of them can see the bigger picture. Yeah. Other, and, other, other than that, other than that, know, David Miscavige. Fuck away Everything was okay things. before David Miscavige. Yeah? <laughs> Hubbard was a stand-up guy. It was just yeah. when Miscavige came in that shit. Yeah, and then yeah, there, yeah. you know, remember Arnie Lerma? He talked about the ten levels out of Scientology. It was yeah. something like that. It was something like this, William. It was like, um, it's David Miscavige. Oh, Hubbard went crazy in '66. Oh, Hubbard was crazy all along. Oh my God, it's a Nazi mind control machine. Oh my God, that makes me an ex -Nazi, an ex Nazi who needs to do something about it. It was like these ten steps that he brilliantly laid out, and it's like, where do you want to pitch your? What an amazing guy! Out? Do you want do you want to hang on to the tech? Do you want to stay in the controlled opposition, or do you want to use your Scientology experience to learn something from yeah. it? That's that's just the way I. But I think we all go through. I think we all go through these steps as well. And you we know, have we, to go through all of them. We yeah, I mean, I did. I mean, me I did. I mean, I did. For 10 I mean, years, know, I fucking did. I, I still believed in it, and I still believed in it, and I still, even though I was out, and I, and then, you know, and then slowly but surely, I, I just managed to get a, realize what I was doing, you know, I was like, wow, why do I think, why am I thinking like that? And I realized it was ingrained, it was just ingrained, and it was like, to, to overcome it just takes so, so much time. Dude, it's a lot of work. William, why don't we have you on again, and we'll talk about... Um, we'll go deeper into this, into the occult, and also some of the deprogramming processes that you know we went through and stuff, um, and talk about you know all that stuff. Because well, I got some information set aside I, on some of that stuff. Yeah, I know you do. I'd really like to discuss that. I just wanted to say, dude, it really yeah. means a lot to me. But how do you feel now, dude? I honestly feel so not like a Scientologist and I have this like kind of new second life um, speaking out about this where um, I mean, I dude, I just feel like I came full circle to be honest with you. Now it may be in my blood for the rest of my life, but I don't, yeah, deny of course. It, like you said, I've, I'm, I've definitely That's denial. integrated if, 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 it. Yeah. And I also, I also can see it exactly for what it is. So I don't argue with ex Scientologists that still believe in the tech that they don't think it's hypnosis. I don't to each his own. I just, um, I'm under no, um, delusions about what that thing is. It was evil from the beginning. It was set up by a psychopath. And it, there's nothing to be had there by going down to the church and taking that personality test. If you want to get rich, if you want to get rich, start a religion. You know, he, he achieved his <laughs> He achieved his goal. He yeah. earned his name in fire. Yeah. We're still talking in history, about it today. We're talking history, about it right yeah. now. He didn't fucking fail, did he? Nope. He died He's, in 86. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And he, yeah. we're talking about him and his name will he be He burned his name into history time. books and that's what he wanted. Shit. Yeah, and but he's he still got, he got what he wanted. He's still he still he still got his goal. And hey, if that, there is what, life after if there is life after death, I wouldn't want to be where he is. I wouldn't want to be in target his too. life. <laughs> he's gonna target well, we, too. <laughs> the door's locked. Well, we're expecting no less. So if you're in there, Vicky, these are for Betty Word, the OT6, the world's first OT6, left to die, a lonely, horrible death. May her soul rest in peace.